The Jeep Compass is the brand's mid-size SUV slotted between the Renegade and the Wrangler in its lineup. The front end has an aura of sophistication about it that keeps it up to date with rivals, yet it has rugged appeal thanks to the presence of the trademark seven slotted grille that merges seamlessly with the slim LED headlights. Those come standard by the way and they're complemented by the bold front bumper. Alloy wheels range from 17 to 19 inches in size. With our Trailhawk variant, we have 17 inch off-road alloy wheels. They do a brilliant job at smoothing out light undulations around town, as well as absorbing the harsh impact of humps and bumps and aggressive potholes. As standard, your new compass will come with auto folding and heated door mirrors. You can also have these integrated with blind spot monitoring. More on that later. You also get black roof rails and tinted rear privacy glass. Not much to say about the rear end. I think Jeep could have done more here to make it look a little bit more muscular and aggressive, but I do like how the taillights merge around from the side and onto the tailgate and the prominently displayed 4xe and Trailhawk badging, just bringing out that rugged appeal a bit more. The Compass rewards you with a boot space of 438 litres. Upon opening the automatic tailgate that's available with high spec grades, you can see that the load space itself is incredibly wide and handily square shaped, making it easy to load awkwardly shaped and sized items into the back. So we have lots of hooks dotted around this compartment to strap objects down, I like to roll around. There's also a little area to the left hand side there, perfect for those rolling objects. Disappointment I have is that with this variant, we have a spare tire underneath the floor. So there is some underfloor storage, but that is all taken up by that tire with the maintenance kit. If you need to fit a bike or a buggy into the back, you will likely have to fold down the rear seats and you can do, but not from here. It's a bit of a faff. You have to climb over the parcel shelf. It's just not worth it. Just go around to the side. And you'll be able to toggle the levers from there. The seats then fold down in a 60, 40 arrangement. But if you go with the top spec S grade model, you'll be able to fold down the seats in a 40, 20, 40 arrangement. That means you can fold down the middle seat independently, sliding long objects through like skis and golf clubs into the rear cabin space. With the seats completely folded, you can see that there were a slight incline. Unfortunately, they don't fold completely flat and there is a rather awkward gap in the floor. Thankfully, you do get an adjustable height boot floor and if you don't have a massive wheel underneath that, you will be able to sort the floor out so it sits completely flush with the seats so there's no awkward gap created there. But this is a really nice space that's been created now. Easily enough room for two adult bikes if you take the wheel off and a large buggy. Right, we know it's practical, but how does it drive on UK roads, considering this is an off-roader? Let's get behind the wheel. It's quite a firm ride, certainly not as soft and cosseting as other family SUVs out there, but that works to the Jeep's advantage because none of the Im impacts of potholes and harsh abrasions find their way into the cabin. Sadly, there's certain improvements that could be made to the steering setup. It's light, which makes this rather bulky SUV quite easy to maneuver around town and into and out of tight spaces. But fortunately, it lacks any kind of feel and doesn't instill much confidence as a result on more challenging terrain. Body lean is also quite severe when navigating through sharp corners and bends. The side bolsters aren't prominent enough to hold you in place, so you'll find yourself in the corner over here by the window. The alignment of the pedals could be improved too. There's not a lot of space for your left foot with automatic transmission models, though both the accelerator and the brake feel great. They are firm, so it's easy to gauge how much pressure you need to provide in order to either accelerate or slow down. Let's talk about noise at higher speed on the motorway and dual carriageway. If you've opted for the larger 19 inch alloy wheels, you'll hear quite a lot of road noise start seeping into the cabin. If you've opted for the standard 18 inch wheels, this is made significantly better. Wind noise is quite prevalent at those high speeds too. You'll hear some bellowing from around the mirrors and the windscreen pillars. Also, compared to other hybrid models out there, the transition from the hybrid system to engine power isn't as smooth and seamless as I would like, as you hear the engine kick in with a loud roar, and it sounds rather coarse, it's, it's rather unpleasant. It also sends a bit of vibration throughout the cabin. You'll feel that through the pedals and the steering wheel. Visibility is excellent, and you can pump yourself up high with that seat adjustment and get a lofty view of the road ahead over that bonnet. I wish these side pillars weren't as chunky. They do obscure your view a little bit at junctions and roundabouts. This easily could have been remedied though by having a bit of quarter glass here to see corners easier. Mirrors are a really nice size though, giving you a great view of what's behind you. 
View out the back window isn't too bad, and my over-the-shoulder view is decent, slightly obscured by a chunky rear pillar. Thankfully, you get a rear view camera as standard. Often, this is locked behind more expensive trim levels or an optional pack. There's a good amount of material variety on display, and it all comes together quite nicely. Nothing too flashy, nothing that we haven't seen before but it's nice and a definite improvement over the predecessor. The front space isn't as wide as it is with the Tucson or the cash car, but it's wide enough. There's enough room to stretch out and find a comfortable position for you. On all but the top spec S models, the seats are manually adjustable, allowing you to find a very comfortable position very quickly. You get a leather steering wheel, feels nice and premium, and I like the red stitching surrounding it. Behind the wheel, we have a 10.25 inch display that shows you key information you wanna see while on the go, like you can have navigation instructions sharp here, plus your fuel economy figures. This is complemented by the 10.1 inch full HD touchscreen that comes courtesy of the new fifth generation Uconnect infotainment system. But there is a bit of lag when navigating around. The graphics aren't as sharp as I would like, and it's just not as refined as rival systems you get in equivalent models. I like the seats with this Trailhawk model. They're decently comfortable, nice use of upholstered material, and I could easily sit in them for a long journey. The new Compass is 70 millimeters longer between the front and rear wheels than the Renegade. Has that freed up some space inside then? Well, yes, actually. I think this is a really comfortable rear compartment. The doors open nice and wide, as you can see, around 75 to 80 degrees there. So loading kids' seats into the back really really easy guys and then you can attach them to the isofix fittings on either chair those are the ones where you have to slide the seat under and click them in place might be a bit of a faff at first but once they're in you won't have to move that around so yes guys enough space for two adults to comfortably sit in the back here but what happens if you need to squeeze a third one in for those family holidays family getaways whatever you're doing let's slide on over and see what it's going to be like for them well this is a rather strange middle seat you've got it's like bolsters here as you can see and uh, because I've got quite a large rear end I am colliding with those and that's quite uncomfortable. There is a transmission tunnel but it's weirdly shaped it kind of seeps out from the sides it's not just a square tunnel that you see in a lot of other cars so that means you have to put your legs quite far out encroaching on the personal space of those other passengers um, but comfort wise not too bad I could sit here for about an hour or so. Okay guys should you consider buying leasing or financing the Jeep Compass 4xe plug-in hybrid. Overall, if you're in the market for a new family SUV, don't let this pass you by, especially if you like venturing outdoors for hikes and dog walks, and you need a vehicle that could take a little bit more of a beating than what you have now, then this is a really good option. If you'd like to dive into the Compass range in more detail, guys, find the specification that suits your needs perfectly, then just get in touch with our vehicle specialist via the number in the banner below. Alternatively, you can just click that pop-up banner hanging out up there to book a call at a time that best works for you and head down to the link in the description box below to go over to the OSV website and browse the hottest lease deals we have available on the new Compass. Thanks for watching our Compass review guys. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the OSV channel. That way you won't miss out on our brand new in-depth reviews. Once you're on board, there's a notification bell down there. When you click it, you'll get notified when we upload the next video. That's it. Thanks for watching. Take care and safe driving.